Welcome back. This is lesson seven of machine learning Zoom Camp session four. And in this lesson, we will talk about cross validation. So, in the previous lesson, we talked about AUC, which is a good way of measuring the performance of binary classification models. And in this lesson, we will talk about parameter tuning. So parameter tuning is the process of selecting the best parameter. And uh, what we usually do is, uh, let's say we have our data set. So you have seen this picture many times already. So what we do, uh, we split the entire data set in three parts, train, validation, and test. So then we forget about test and we use uh, the validation data set to find the best parameter for our model G. So we find the best parameters for training the model. But it's not the only possible way of uh, validating our models. So usually what we do is uh, for the test data set, we always set it aside. Uh, but for validation set, we have different options. So we leave aside the test part, we hold it out and forget about this, and we have a full train data set. And we split it into multiple parts. So let's say we can split it into k parts. In our case, we can say that k is equal to 3. So let's say we split it into three parts, 1, 2, and 3. Let me move this to a new screen. So we have our full train data set. And what we can do next is uh, can take the part one and part two for our training data set. We train a model, we get our function G. We evaluate this function G on part number three. Three is used for validation. And then we compute AUC on this validation data set. And this is pretty similar to what we usually do, except maybe here, instead of using 20%, uh, we use 30% uh, of data. And here we use, I don't know, 67% of data. But other than that, it's very similar to what we did previously. But we don't stop on that. We then use uh, the part number two for validation. And then we use uh, part number one and three for training. We train a model. So this time we use a different training data set and then we validate a model on a different validation data set. And then we record AUC or accuracy or whatever other metric again. And then we do this again. So we train our, our model on parts two and three and evaluate it on part number one. And then we again record the AUC. So what happens here is that uh, the result of this is we have uh, three scores, AC1, AC2, AC3, and then we compute a mean score and we can compute the standard deviation. Each of these cells is actually called a fault. And so for each of these faults, we have uh, AUC. So we can compute the mean AUC for each of the fault and we can also compute standard deviation. And standard deviation will show us how stable the model is, so how much the scores differ across different faults. So let's implement that. Before we implement this, we need to create a function for training. So let's say this function takes in a data frame from which it will create our feature matrix, and then y, which it will use to fit the model. So we have some dictionaries that we extract from our data frame, categorical and numerical variables. And then we use this to dict the method. And then we extract records. And then we need to fit our dictionary vectorizer like we did previously. Now let's do fit transform these dictionaries. And then the result is our matrix X. Let's use train here. And we have uh, our feature matrix X underscore train. Now we can create a model, logistic regression, and we can fit this model using this uh, feature matrix and target variable. And then what we can do is uh, return the model, and we will also need to return the vectorizer, because the vectorizer knows how to transform our dictionaries into feature matrix, and then the model knows what to do with them after they are transformed. So this is what happens inside the train function. We can use it. So let's say for our training data set, just make it explicit. So this is a training data set. Um, so then we have y train. And then it will return dictionary vectorizer and model. And then we need another model for making predictions. So let's call it predict. This model needs also get a data frame, the dictionary vectorizer, and this model needs to get a model. But, uh, so what this model is doing first, it's uh, converting the data frame into list of dictionaries. And then it creates a feature matrix using the vectorizer. Let's form 
and and then finally it uses the model predict proba then we need the second column of this and this is our predictions and we return them so this is how our function looks like and we'll try to use it for our validation data set so prediction vectorizer and model and then it returns a numpy array with predictions so we have these uh, two functions that we can use and now let's use this uh, k-fold cross-validation the code for k-fold cross-validation uh, lives in the model selection package of scikit-learn like train the split function so from scikit-learn uh, model selection import k-fold so this is the class we are interested in yeah, let's create it uh, k-fold Let's look at the parameters. So we have number of splits and shuffle and then random states. So for number of splits, uh, let's use three and shuffle, or I don't know, we can go with 10. So in case of 10, we'll take our data set and split it into 10 parts. And each part will be 10%. So let's say we will train a model on 90% of data and then evaluate it on 10%. And we will repeat this 10 times. So we want to shuffle our data set. Shuffle is true. And then we also want to fix the random seed to make sure the results are reproducible. We are not done yet. Now in this key fold object, there is the split method that takes in uh, our feature matrix. And it doesn't have to be actually X. It doesn't have to be feature matrix. We can also put a data frame here. And uh, our data frame is full train data frame data frame and then the result is uh, it's a generator object this is uh, a thing over which we can iterate and then yeah we can use next method to see what's inside so yeah it returns two things two arrays the first one is indexes for the train part and then indexes for the validation part so we can look at the length of this train index and validation index yeah, so the length of our full train data set, data frame is uh, 5,600. One tenth of that is for validation and uh, the rest is for training because we use uh, K or like, the number of splits equals to 10. And now we can just uh, use ILOG to select a part of this data frame. This will be our training data frame, data frame train. And the same way we can get our validation data frame. Right, so we have now two data frames, and now we can do the same thing that we would usually do with them. Extract the dictionary, fit the dictionary vectorizer, extract the feature matrix, train a model, and so on. Um, yeah, of course, we don't use the next method. What we usually do is we use a loop. So we loop over the synthesis in uh, this thing, kfold.split. So this one creates a generator and then we loop over it. So there are 10 elements that this generator generates. So we have 10 iterations of this loop. And then for each iteration, we do this. And remember that we actually have already a function for training and prediction. So let's use that uh, train uh, data frame train. The result is dictionary vectorizer and model. Then let's use this predict method. So predict method gets a validation data frame and it gets the dictionary vectorizer in the model. And then what we want to do next is compute AC, data frame uh, validation churn. Yeah, I think for this one, we need uh, our Y train and our Y train is data frame train churn. And our validation is uh, data frame validation churn. Yeah, of course here we use that and our prediction. Yeah, so now we need actually to save this. Let's say we'll create a list with scores. And then, so after each iteration, we evaluate the model and we save the results to this scores variable. And let's run it. Oh, yeah, so we have a mistake here. And uh, the reason for that is uh, I use the frame train here when I copy it. So let's run this again. And you see it takes a while, right? So each time, uh, it takes some time to feed a model, and now we do it uh, 10 times. Uh, we have this warning now, yeah, we can ignore it. Um, so what we see here is that each iteration takes some time. Let me stop it, interrupt. 
So what I want to show you is how to, to see progress of each of the iterations of a loop. So there is a nice library called TQDM. I already have it installed, but if you don't, this is how you can install it. You can import it from TQDM auto import TQDM. So we get this TQDM and then we can just wrap our loop in this thing. So now we will see how long each iteration takes. So each iteration takes approximately four seconds. So it doesn't tell us uh, how many iterations are there in general because it doesn't know. This thing is an iterator. Okay, so we trained 10 models. So I'll remove these warnings. Yeah, so now we have this variable with scores. And we see that this is the score we got by evaluating our model on the first fold, the second fold, and so on. So they're a bit different. Right? So this one is pretty low, for example. This one is pretty high. So what we can do now is compute the mean uh, score and also compute standard deviation. And so we see that the average score across all 10 folds is uh, 84%. And then the spread uh, standard deviation is 1% approximately. So we can just, um, so let's say we can use, we can look only at three digits. This should look nicer. Yeah. So it tells us that the mean AUC is uh, this, 84%, and then the spread is around 0 0.012. That's pretty low. At the beginning, we actually talked about parameter tuning. The, our model, the logistic regression, has a parameter, so parameter C. So C is um, equivalent to regularization parameter we talked about. The default one is 1, and what we can do is we can add this parameter C to our train function. Use the default value. And uh, let's pass it to our logistic regression. So yeah, and if we want to train a model with, uh, let's say, a value of uh, with C equals to 10, we just do that. And then we get a model when a model is trained like that. This is a bit annoying. So let me just uh, fix this. There is this uh, parameter max duration. So let's uh, set it to 1000. So yeah, now the model finishes and uh, of course we can control this so we can give it uh, let's see so in c smaller values specify stronger regularization with normal equation the bigger the r was the bigger the regularization effect was but here it's the opposite so actually here if we our c is very small then the regularization is strong and then uh, let's say if it's big then the regularization is not strong so yeah, if we want to train a model with a lot of regularization, we use uh, this parameter. So this is how we can uh, control this uh, parameter C. So we can iterate over different values of C. So let's say we can try zero, and then uh, some smaller values, uh, 0 0.5, maybe one, uh, five, 10. And we also want to print C here. We also want to let TQDM know how many iterations are there. So we can just use the total parameter, which is equals to yeah, so this one. Let's also move it here. So, and splits, let's say five, because 10 is just, it will take too long. Let's use that. And then total will be number of splits. And let's run that. See, there is a progress bar. So it uh, now tries the C equals to zero the wrong indentation. Yeah, so let me stop it. What I forgot to do is add the C parameter here. So let me rerun it. And uh, I also noticed that here, this progress bar and uh, the output, they kind of are put together, which is not very nice. So I'll put this TQDM thing over the values of C. And let me remove it here. No, actually we cannot use uh, zero here. So we need to start with some small value. So it took two minutes, 30 seconds. Now we can look at the results. We see that uh, with small C, the AUC drops a little bit. C0.1 seems the best one. So it's a little bit higher than the rest. Oh, also this one is high. We can just go with one. It seems okay. So it, since it's default, so probably it's good enough. So they have all the same mean performance. They have the same uh, standard deviation. And this one is a little bit lower, but yeah, we can just go with one.
So what we need to do now is we want to train our final model. So we want to train our final model on the full train data set and to validate it on the test data set. And for that, what we can do is we can just take these three lines of code and uh, let me move this. So we train our model on our full train data set and uh, our target variable is uh, churn. Right. And then uh, we predict this on the test data set, right? And then we evaluate this on the test data set as well. Then, uh, yeah, actually, here we use C equals to one. And I want to print uh, the result as well. Yeah, okay, it finished. And we see that AUC is a little bit better than what we had here, but not too much higher. It shouldn't be a big surprise for us that it's a little bit higher. If it was a bit, little bit lower, it would also be good. Uh, as long as it's not a drastic change between here being like uh, 80%, 84%, and here is like 70 or something like that. So 1%, 2% difference between performance on the on the validation and the testing is okay. And if you remember here how the, our scores were changing quite uh, a lot, actually, um, within each fold, like since it's 83, 84 sometimes, that on this particular data set it got to 85 shouldn't be a big surprise for us. Yeah, actually, we see that uh, on one of the faults, the evaluation was almost as good as this one. So I think it's uh, okay. So uh, there's nothing to worry about. Uh, maybe you also could be wondering okay, when should I use cross validation and when I use, uh, should I use usual validation, holdout data set? I think for most of the time, usual holdout data set is fine. So especially in cases when your data set is quite large, you can just hold uh, out a part of this data set for validation and then do it in the same way as we did in uh, week two and week three. If your data set is smaller or you want to have, if you also want to have standard deviation to understand how stable your model is and how much it varies across different fold, then you can use cross validation. And for bigger data set, maybe number of splits could be two or three. For smaller data set, maybe you want to do uh, more splits, like maybe 10 or something like this. Okay, I think that's all for this lesson and for this uh, session as well. So next, in the next lesson, we'll just do a summary and go over uh, what we learned.